Welcome, my dear viewers, thank you for being with my channel and watching my videos, I'm telling you a story from my life, watch this video to the end, you will understand what I'm telling you, so as not to miss my new videos. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your explanations in the comments then let's go. Even if you attempt to trouble us, there's hardly any loss on your part, considering it's your funds, useless to poor people with lowly lineage. I sighed as I completed the final check. You're closing your account, right? Please, go ahead. I said with a tone that seemed mocking. Their eyes, filled with clear disdain, made me feel disgusted as they stared at us. I decided it was time to give those who judge others by their upbringing a taste of their own medicine. With that thought, I smiled. My name is Tiffany, a 29-year-old office worker. Currently, I'm living a peaceful life with my mom while working. My dad passed away from an illness when I was young. His chronic illness had worsened early. My father, who was involved in various businesses, was always busy with work, out early and back late. Even so, he treasured his family time, and I have fond memories of playing with him on his days off. Mom and I were initially shocked by Dad's death, but Mom, not wanting me to feel lonely, cherished our time together. Fortunately, when Dad fell ill, he made sure with the former CEO to secure enough funds for our livelihood. Thanks to that, I was able to go to college and both dad's and mom's parents were very supportive, especially my paternal grandparents, who lived nearby, took great care of me when mom was away at work. We still go back to both sets of grandparents for holidays like Christmas and spend time together. I am who I am today thanks to the support of many people. To give back, I went to a national university and got a job at a major company. I thought about working at the bank my dad was supposed to inherit, but I chose a career I loved. As you're being told, do what you love. I've already handed the bank over, don't worry about it. Thanks to a fulfilling home environment and the freedom to dive into hobbies, I had no interest in romance. But now, at a mature age, many of my friends are married with kids. This led me to think about marriage, and that's when a certain encounter happened. I never imagined this meeting would lead to a major incident. Hey, Tiffany, aren't you interested in love, huh? That was the starting point, a question from a colleague at work. We've been close since our rookie days. You know, I have an acquaintance who's struggling to find a match. He's well-educated and handsome. You're highly educated too, Tiffany. Maybe you'd like to meet him. I've always thought it's a waste for someone as eloquent as you, Tiffany. There are even a few people in the office who are after you. She has a wide network and always shares various stories. She's living with her boyfriend, whom she met at a party, and seems very happy. She's quite concerned about my lack of romantic involvement. I had even consulted her about marriage, leading to this arrangement. A few days later, I agreed to meet a man named Yves. The rendezvous was at a cafe, and as I waited nervously, a man approached me. Tiffany? Ah, yes, nice to meet you. You're yes, right? I said, feeling a bit anxious. Yes, thank you for today. Yosef's expression was blank as he looked me over. It felt like he was sizing me up, and I was a bit taken aback. Then taking a seat opposite me, he quickly started the conversation. What do you do for work, Tiffany? He inquired. I work in sales at a company. I've always enjoyed interacting with people and making use of my opinions, which is why I chose sales. I find it fulfilling, and I love the moments when customers are happy with their purchases. I replied, trying to ease the tension. What's the name of your company? He asked. I told him the name of my company. Upon hearing it, Is paused for a moment then smiled. It wasn't a pleasant smile, more like one of satisfaction. My company is quite a large enterprise with good performance. We're well trusted by our customers, he said, his tone slightly arrogant. Since he asked, I decided to return the question. What do you do, yes? At my question, Is snorted with pride and began to boast. I work at Sunrise Bank as a department head. 
Sunrise Bank is a really big bank, you know. The work is tough, not something ordinary people can handle. But since my dad is the CEO and I'm the successor, it's different for me. I felt a stir in my chest at Yosef's words. I was expecting a normal response, but Yosef's aggressively toned words made me feel uncomfortable. Indeed, Sunrise Bank is a major bank. I knew about Sunrise Bank due to a certain incident, but I was surprised to learn that East worked there as a department head. Wow, that's impressive. Sunrise Bank is a big place, isn't it? I flattered Yis on purpose. I saw no need to be rude, and though I thought this would probably be our last meeting, I figured it was better to be nice. Pleased with my flattery, Yis continued to boast about himself. Honestly, talking to him was painful. He did listen to me occasionally, but always turned the conversation back to himself, even making outrageous comments about his lack of romantic prospects. I'm quite popular, you know, but it's always people who don't match my family background or education level that come to me. I thought the problem might be his attitude, but I had already decided not to meet him again after informing my friend. As time passed, he still looked satisfied and made a suggestion. I'd really like to meet your parents, huh? But we just met today. That's exactly why parents' excellence is important, especially if we're going to date, right? Inside, I screamed. I had no intention of dating him. But he seemed oblivious to my discomfort and kept pushing forward. When are your parents in? Are you available? Ah, I'll have to discuss it with my mom. Hmm. What about your dad? As Yis pressed on. I felt a growing sense of disgust, but couldn't find the strength to cut him off. Ah, my dad passed away when I was young. At my words, Yis narrowed his eyes. Suddenly, waiting for him to speak, Yis just said, I see, and fell silent, pondering. Well, send me a date that works for you later. I'll adjust my schedule. Ah, uh, no, I mean thank you. Should we leave then? Before I could finish, Yis stood up. It felt like talking to someone from a different world, despite my reluctance. I had given him my contact information and even discussed meeting our parents. His disdainful look upon hearing about my father's absence bothered me. In the end, we agreed to meet again with our parents. When I explained this to mom, she smiled. Riley, maybe you were just nervous because you haven't dated before, she said reassuringly. Maybe, but the way he spoke was weird. Well, his parents will be there, right? Just say no if it doesn't feel right. I'll be there too, I replied, feeling guilty. Thanks, Mom. Sorry for dragging you into this. I apologized. Mom laughed heartily. It's okay. No need for you to feel bad. Besides, I'm curious about Sunrise Bank, so let's see how it goes. So, yes, and I've arranged a family meeting. At that time... I had no idea Yis had planned the meeting for such a shocking purpose. On the day of the meeting, we arrived at the place Yis had chosen. It was a fancy restaurant. It's a big place, isn't it? I remarked as we entered. Yes, it is, Mom agreed. Inside, our table was ready, but Yis hadn't arrived yet. We entered and waited, and shortly after the scheduled time, Yis and his family arrived. Sorry we're late. The traffic was terrible. Nice to meet you. Thank you for today. Yosef's family unapologetically took their seats. Irritated but not wanting to start a fight, I initiated the family meeting. After some time, Yosef's mom, Morgan, with a slay smile, spoke up. So, where is your father? Is he coming later? Huh? She inquired, looking around. I looked at Yis but he just smirked dismissively and said nothing. I had already told him my dad was deceased. Morgan acted as if she didn't know, despite having agreed to meet our families. Mom quickly responded, In my stead, my husband passed away from illness when Tiffany was young. So today, I'm here as her mother, Mom responded with a calm smile. In contrast, Morgan raised her voice in an exaggerated manner. Oh my, Tiffany is from a single-parent family. Her words took me aback. Even after explaining that my father had passed away from illness, 
Her tone clearly carried malice. Being from a single parent family, life must be quite hard, huh? But she graduated from a public university, that's commendable, right? Really, but still, being from a single parent family, wouldn't dating her be complicated? He's family's conversation left mom and me utterly dumbfounded. Despite being present, they spoke so disrespectfully, mocking us as if being from a single parent family was something bad. Such words weren't suitable for a first meeting. Angered, I retorted in a low voice, excuse me, but after dad passed away, mom raised me with great care. I owe my current life to her. And isn't it rude to speak about someone like that when you've just met Tiffany? However, Morgan burst out laughing at my words. Rude, isn't it? More absurd for the daughter of a single parent to think about marrying into a high-class family. Um, I'm not really into strong-willed women. This is pointless. There's no getting through to them. Thinking this, I just stared at them in disbelief. I had high hopes since she works at a major company. Well, you'll eventually carry on Sunrise Bank, so maybe she's not quite at your level. As they hurled more insults, I felt no need to listen anymore. Trembling with anger, Mom glared at them. Did you invite us here today just to look down on us? I've heard from Tiffany about the other day. You're enjoying berating us for being a single parent family, aren't you? Her words took me aback. Even after explaining that my father had passed away from illness, her tone clearly carried malice. Being from a single parent family, life must be quite hard, huh? But she graduated from a public university. That's commendable, right? Really, but still, being from a single parent family, wouldn't dating her be complicated? He's family's conversation left mom and me utterly dumbfounded. Despite being present, they spoke so disrespectfully, mocking us as if being from a single parent family was something bad. Such words weren't suitable for a first meeting. Angered, I retorted in a low voice, excuse me, but after dad passed away, mom raised me with great care. I owe my current life to her. And isn't it rude to speak about someone like that when you've just met, Tiffany? However, Morgan burst out laughing at my words. Rude, isn't it? More absurd for the daughter of a single parent to think about marrying into a high-class family. Um, I'm not really into strong-willed women. This is pointless. There's no getting through to them. Thinking this, I just stared at them in disbelief. I had high hopes since she works at a major company. Well, you'll eventually carry on Sunrise Bank. So maybe she's not quite at your level. As they hurled more insults, I felt no need to listen anymore. Trembling with anger, Mom glared at them. Did you invite us here today just to look down on us? I've heard from Tiffany about the other day. You're enjoying berating us for being a single parent family, aren't you? It was the first time I heard her speak so sternly. Please stop with the accusations. It was just a little teasing, right? No one feels good being mocked, and all your remarks are condescending. We have no intention of listening to this any further. East family looked displeased at mom's clear statement. Presumptuous for commoners, huh? Indeed, that may be the case. But this has made up my mind. Yi's family looked briefly surprised at mom's words, then burst into laughter. They seemed to be thinking, what can you possibly do? Mom sighed and began to speak. Actually, we have funds deposited with your bank, but we don't wish to entrust them to people like you. Oh, really? But we don't know your name, so it can't be much, right? It's probably insignificant. That's right. Even if you try to trouble us with your fun, it won't really affect us. Low-class poor people are not needed. I realized that even mom's last attempt at reconciliation was in vain but they continued to speak disdainfully, unaware. I sighed and made the final confirmation. We're closing our account. Okay, go ahead. Yosef's family responded with mocking tones and clearly disdainful expressions as they looked at us. I thought to myself, let's make those who judge others by their background suffer a bit. I smiled at the thought. Is that so? Then we will proceed as such. And please consider this meeting never happened.
Yosef's family declared. Of course, I replied calmly, knowing we had no intention of marrying into a family with such prejudices. Well then, we will take our leave now, Mom, and I stood up. Oh, don't worry about today's bill. It's too expensive for you, they remarked. Is that so? Well then, with that, our family meeting ended. Later, I made a phone call. Weeks later, my mole phone was flooded with calls from Mias. Of course, I had anticipated this and had no intention of answering. It was their own responsibility. I immediately blocked the number. A few days later, I received a call from Grandpa Kyle. Summoned by Kyle, Mom and I headed to Sunrise Bank in the meeting room. Yi's family, looking pale, was present. As soon as they saw us, Morgan stood up and rushed over to bow deeply. I am extremely sorry for what happened, she said. I didn't reply to Morgan's words, just smiled and began to speak. What exactly are you apologizing for? At my words, Morgan bit her lip hard, trembling with anger. That's understandable. There are too many things for which they should apologize. That's probably why she's feeling so frustrated. This whole situation started because I said we would close our account. That day, our account wasn't particularly large. Closing it wouldn't have caused much damage. But Kyle's case was different. Kyle managed the inheritance left by my dad at Sunrise Bank for our benefit. Kyle also had his own account there. If all accounts, including Kyle's and my dad's inheritance, were closed, it would total about $7,000 million. In other words, their disrespect decided the closure. And importantly, Kyle is the former CEO of the bank. Dad was supposed to take over the bank but passed away young, so the position went to Scott. I didn't know that Tiffany was related to the former CEO, Scott. Looking anxious, Yosef pleaded as if making an excuse. But that's no excuse. Even if they didn't know, their prejudice against our family is their own fault. You mean, if we were relatives, you would have treated us differently? Dad interjected. Hey, don't talk to Dad like that. It's your fault for not telling us from the start that your grandpa was the former CEO. I don't have any obligation to tell a stranger like you that. Besides, you were the one who started it and made fun of us, remember? I countered, causing Yosef to narrow his eyes in frustration. You insulted me knowing I was from a single-parent family. When I said I would transfer the bank due to insecurity, you told us to go ahead. We just did as we were told. But it's just that it may be just that for you. But have you ever thought about the feelings of someone whose family has been insulted? Silence fell. Morgan was trembling, looking hopeless, and Scott was hanging his head. But Yosef still seemed unconvinced, his face full of dissatisfaction. Getting all high and mighty just because people talk to you. Yosef remains unrepentant. At that moment, the door to the conference room opened and Kyle appeared. Seeing Kyle, Yosef's tone grew defiant, and Morgan turned even paler. Frozen in place, only Yosef glared at me. Even after giving you a chance to reflect, you're still only thinking about yourselves. Kyle said, his tone stern. It's not my fault. It's her watch your words. If you continue, you'll end up even more miserable. Yosef, silenced by Kyle's words, glared at me again. Then, as if resigned, he burst out, no way. Who would think a single parent's relative was the former CEO? You knew I was the future CEO and came to the family meeting just to mock us. Yosef, be quiet. Kyle glared sternly, causing Yosef to breathe heavily. Future CEO, huh? Kyle then turned his gaze to Scott, who shrunk even more under Kyle's stare. I understand wanting to leave the bank to your son, but now that I know his mindset, it's impossible for him to continue as CEO. That's ridiculous, Scott started to retort, but sat down again under Kyle's gaze. You still don't understand that your attitude is the problem. Though I'm retired, the board will decide. If you have something to say, say it to them. Remember, we recorded the previous conversation, and this one. Don't forget that the voice recorder will serve as evidence. 
I took out a voice recorder in front of the three and pressed play. The recorder started playing back our conversation from the other day. How dare you prepare something like that? It's unfair, Yosef exclaimed. It was just a precaution, but remember, you forced me into this situation. I countered. Yosef had nothing to say in return, and their faces turned pale. Thank you, we'll handle it from here, they said. So mom and I left. Ultimately, Kyle didn't transfer the funds, at least not officially. Scott was removed from his CEO position, and Yosef was demoted. Seemingly unable to handle the blow to his pride, Yosef resigned voluntarily. Kyle's influence in the financial industry meant Yosef would struggle to find work in the same field again. Whether Scott knew this or not, he seemed determined to work until retirement, but Kyle said it would be tough for him both mentally and physically. Morgan, who used to wield power as the CEO's wife, apparently started part-time work to maintain her lifestyle, but her character likely made it hard for her to keep a job. I'm really sorry, I said. It's okay. You didn't know, right? Mom replied. I only shared what happened with a friend who introduced me to Yosef. She just heard about him through someone else and wasn't at fault. Mom was initially concerned about being a single parent, but I'm happy now and can live thanks to the support I've received. When I told her that, she smiled and said thank you. After everything was taken care of, Kyle told us to come over to his house again sometime. I'm really grateful for Kyle's help in resolving the situation. He was tough, but I'm happy now, so it's okay. I have some good news for you, Mom said one day. Really? It's not about dating again, is it? I teased. It's a friend of my boyfriend this time. He's definitely a good guy. I'm not interested in dating right now, but I'm satisfied with my current life. I want to keep cherishing those who support me. And maybe someday I'll meet someone I really click with. 